All right, I wanted to show you this circuit that I've built. It's a big power circuit for a very large motor, that um, monster over here that's uh, no joke, that is a very large motor, and I want to control it using a Darlington circuit. And what a Darlington circuit is, is you use one transistor uh, to run to the base of another transistor. Each transistor normally gives an amplification rating, a beta rating of about 100. So in this case, having two transistors, like in a Darlington configuration, you end up multiplying the amplification. Let me give you a, a real quick schematic of what I'm after here. Um, so uh, I've got my motor up here, and then I'm going to have a diode, just a flashback, a little diode here. Uh, but then I've got my very large power transistor all the way over here, okay? And we call it a TIP, that's Texas Instruments Power Transistor, TIP 35, an old school one. It can handle something like, oh, I don't know, 25 amps if you can heat sink it appropriately. They're NPNs. And then over here, I've got a much smaller, just a standard uh, 2N3904 that's going to run that larger uh, transistor. And then I've got a variable resistor here that is going to allow me to control the motor speed. Uh, all of this theoretical work is pretty straightforward. But in the real world, it's much more difficult to start and especially stop motors. So up here will be my voltage rating out of the power supply. Right now I'll put this on five amps and that five amps can only go up to, um, better yet I'll do it this way, 10 amps can go up to 18 volts. And uh, this is the amount of current going through that motor there. And this is the amount of current going through the base of my tip 35. And my tip 35 is right over there and I have uh, a heat sink on the bottom and on the top. I've got them color coded. Um, and then I also have a thermal gun there because uh, I'm always worried about uh, the temperature. So uh, I'll turn this on and I'll just take this up to 18 volts, whatever it goes, 19.5. So here's my variable resistor. The hard part of starting a motor is I need to make sure I don't overload um, either the power supply, this can handle 10 amps, so I'm not going to overload this, but uh, this ammeter goes up to 5 amps. I don't know if you can see it with the glare. Uh, kind of put it to the side there a little bit, but uh, I need to get at least 2 amps to get this thing to start turning. So right about there, I start to get the motor to spin, and you can hear it, and then I can give it a little bit more power. Now that's 17.9. Um, I've got about uh, what is that? I'm on a 500 scale. About 70 milliamps right there, and I'm controlling approximately two and a half amps to that motor. Now, uh, this circuit works well, and I can certainly adjust my speed accordingly, but that's going to be a very different ball game if I want to go up to much higher voltages. Um, the big problem I'm having is when I decrease the speed, I got to make sure I do it very slowly. Because if I don't, I end up with a bunch of dead soldiers here. This is a tip 35 that's been blown out, and I've got a pile of them over there. So I'm going to switch my power supply to the 5 amp, which allows me to go to 36 uh, amps. i got to make sure I don't go over 5 amps, but if I did, that uh, transistor is going to get incredibly hot. So I'm going to take this all the way up to... Um, it's really, really hard to start. I'll take it up to about 40 volts right there. And I've got to be very careful because this is not a linear circuit at this point. Um, once I get to three amps, it wants to jump up to 20 amps like that. So I have to, I have to play with it. So it's almost like a video game. Um, but during that time, we'll be able to look at the other readings. Let me just see if I can get this up to speed. So I'm going to watch my ammeter here. And as that ammeter starts to jump, so uh, right about here, it's going up to one amp. I need about two amps to get it to start. And it's trying. Once it starts, I'm at four amps. This is where my transistor gets really hot over there, like crazy hot. And I'll start taking this up higher and higher. Just jump to four, comes back down. Every time you get this thing to accelerate, I go way over five amps. And I don't know, you can't feel it vibrating the entire table here, 
but now I'm at 37 amps. That thing is cooking, and uh, I'm going to put this over here, take my temperature sensor. That's only at 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is um, about 58 Celsius. With the appropriate heat sink on this, the double heat sink, um, oh, it's, it's getting hot now. So I'm at uh, 208 degrees Fahrenheit, but you'll notice that I'm controlling all of that power using about 70 millivolts there. So it's pretty impressive. The hardest part is slowing this down. Remember, it wants to become a generator at that point. So I got to slow it down very gently. Uh, but the slowing process is what probably destroyed all of my transistors. I do have a flashback diode over there, um, but it does not seem to be preventing uh, the issue that I was having with blowing out my tip 35s. And again, back here, I'll move this to the side. I've got this very, very little tiny transistor there that's powering this uh, much larger transistor. So. That's how you can use a Darlington circuit to uh, end up controlling very, very large motors. Uh, probably go up higher. I think that tip 35C is rated up to 100 volts, um, but I'm not comfortable going any faster with that motor without some kind of other safety protocol. So, all right, thank you.